What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today, and in this video, this is the second installment of my collection. Today we are going to be taking a look at my Alaska Airlines fleet. So, I know I've kind of neglected this series for the past few months with, with it only having one episode up, up to this point, and that was my Airbus A321 fleet. So today we are going to look at a specific airline in my fleet, and that is Alaska Airlines. So they actually have a much bigger representation than I thought they did. Um, so we got two 737-900s, we got one non-ER and one ER variant. Um, two 737-800s, one Airbus A320, one Airbus A319, one Dash AQ400, although that's kind of under the Horizon brand, but at this point it's kind of been absorbed into Alaska, so I'm still counting it. And one 727-100. So, um, the only aircraft that you'd really see are these five up here, and then this one down here. These two have since been retired. Yes, the A319s were retired recently, and I believe the A320s are also going to be on their way out pretty soon. Um, how soon, I don't know. The Neos, I think those still got a long time left before they are eventually scrapped. Um, if they do get retired, I'm assuming another airline will probably pick it up. But either way, let's go ahead and get started with the episode. So running a little tail heavy here is this Alaska Dash 8 Q400 that I got this past Christmas. Pretty happy to have this in the fleet as I do kind of need some of these Alaska regional aircraft um, for my collection as I have my Random Model Airport series. So when I did Boise, this was a great opportunity to put this into an airport update for the very first time. Uh, this is the retro livery released by Gemini Jets in 2019. Hoping that they may do another release of it in the regular livery because I'd love to have that as well. Uh, but this retro livery will suit me well for, for the time being. Go ahead and start off at the front. We have the cockpit windows which are interestingly a little misprinted and they looked a little sloped. I'm not sure that's how it actually looks on the real thing but Looks a little strange. Got welcome aboard titles right next to the L1 boarding door. Then we have Alaska celebrates Horizon Air because this is a retro livery. You got the landing gear, the nose landing gear, then you got the main landing gear, and the props do spin. So don't want to spin it too much or else it'll probably fall off. Um, and then you got the landing gear. It looks to be a little bent. I think maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. Um, the wings still kind of look a little sus to me, um, but I think that they're fine. I mean, as long as it's not, like, starting to fall out or anything, I'm not going to, like, jerk it around or try to remove it. Um, and then on the back, we got the rear boarding door. We got the registration, November 421 Quebec X-Ray. So if you're looking to see this aircraft in real life, there's a registration. And there is the tail, which has a really nice sunset, it looks like. Um, I've never seen like an old Horizon Air liveried aircraft before. I know Horizon Air used to exist, I think, like back in the 80s. I think when I remember seeing this for the first time, I thought this was just like a fantasy aircraft. But nope, it is an, a legit retro livery and it looks really nice. So, um, first Dash 8 in about a few years. The last one I got was a Luxair Dash 8 Q400. <laughs> Don't ask me why I got that. I got that back in like 2018 before I really knew what I was collecting. Um, so yeah. So this is the only Horizon aircraft I have. I'm hoping to find an Embraer 175 or um, something else of that liking because I think those are still a little common yet, but I think those are pretty much gone now from everywhere I look. So I'll have to see if somebody on eBay is looking to sell it for a decent price, and I will probably pick it up. So next aircraft. All right, the camera is being a little wonky with me. It is focusing on the, oops, on the wingtip on the starboard side of the aircraft rather than on the fuselage itself. But this is my Alaska Airbus A319. This is one of the aircraft they picked up from the Virgin America merger they had uh, starting in around 2016, and I think they ended it in like 2018 or something. Uh, so they took up all of Alaska's aircraft, and I believe the leases for these A319s expired. So uh, most of them have been scrapped. I think some have gone to American Airlines, so they are still operating um, under just under a different registration. Uh, kind of like what they did with the Frontier A319s, I believe all of those have been retired now. Um, and then all of them are now flying for American Airlines, so that's probably where they're going to be up until the end of their life. So, go ahead and start off at the front. We have the very ugly looking nose. Actually, it doesn't look too bad with the white fuselage, but you can still kind of notice it along with the chunky landing gear. Got the Alaska titles right up against the L1 boarding door. A little bit more forward on this aircraft for some reason. 
we have the uh, Neo size engines. I, I should have specified that this is actually an A319 Neo, um, even though that aircraft is not in commercial operation yet. And there goes the camera again, trying to focus on the wingtip. There's a registration, November 530, Victor Alpha. I don't know if this is claimed by American Airlines or if it has been scrapped. Uh, most likely it's of the latter. And then we got Chester. So you will be seeing Chester on the tail, on the tails of all these aircraft, minus the Horizon Air. Um, I believe he is on the Embraer 175s, um, and then also on the Dash 8s, actually. So um, I just have the aircraft that... Um, that are in special liveries because all the special liveries that they have on the Horizon Dash 8s, which they got like 20,000 of them, uh, they do not have Chester on their tails. I think they're all, all like colleges or universities, apart from that one retro aircraft. Um, so, other than that, there's not much to this. I got this in Christmas of 2019. Um, this is kind of a nice aircraft to have, but then like six months later they retired it, so um, it's just been sitting on my shelf getting very little usage out of it, but thankfully I have been building up on my Alaska fleet uh, to compensate for that, so next aircraft. All right, moving on to the next aircraft. I've removed the other Alaska aircraft from the background because the camera kept focusing on them instead of this. Uh, this is my only 727 in the entire collection, and this is, I believe, the Prospector tail. And we have our uh, little Prospector here on the tail. So this is, I believe, a 2009-ish release. This is like a late 2000s release, nevertheless. It is kind of old. Um, I did get this for a pretty decent price back in July of 2018-ish. Actually, I think it was more June-ish. So the front we have the cockpit windows, which look uh, pretty decently printed on there. Looks pretty nice. We have the Alaska titles above the windows, and then we got a bit of a orange-ish cheat line that goes to the back. Registration is November 314 Alpha Sierra. I don't know if this registration is now used on a 739, um, but nevertheless, this aircraft has been retired, I believe. The Alaska titles on the, um, I believe this is the number two engine up at the top. And then we have the Prospector, because this is the Prospector tail. Um, the other side is pretty much the same thing, um, except that we don't have a boarding door right here, and the closest door to the front would be this one, uh, just right in front of the wings. And then we've got some overwing exit markings, which actually look pretty, pretty decent. Surprised they even had them on that old aircraft. I wonder how long those have been around. Um, so it does have the spigot landing gear, so no rolling tires, and instead you hear this sound. So yeah, that's a pretty lovely sound. It is a cradle mold, but again, a much older release. Uh, there's a Gemini Jets logo and the stand hole underneath. But nevertheless, this is kind of a nice aircraft to have if you are a retro collector. Um, I know plenty of those guys out there would probably love to have this in the collection. Although I think it kind of has like a nose upward attitude for some reason. I think the, maybe the main landing gear was made just a little bit too short on this mold. Um, or maybe that's how it's supposed to look. I have no clue, but iconic aircraft looks really nice in the collection. Although I don't use it for anything other than just for looks. So next aircraft. Next up, we have my only other Airbus in the collection for Alaska Airlines, and it's the A320. And all these, I believe, are still flying, although I think a few of them are about ready to go out of service at some point. Uh, this is 625 Victor Alpha, a pretty popular registration when it comes to making a 1400 Alaska A320 for some reason. At the front, we have the ugly nose, the cockpit windows, uh, the chunky landing gear again, the Alaska titles, and we have the oversized engines. This model did come broken. I believe it was... I can't tell from here, but it's hard to, it's hard to say. But uh, either way, one of the wings was detached from the um, fuselage of the aircraft, which is pretty typical of Gemini jets, especially with this aircraft type. Why they have issues with it, I have no clue, but that's just kind of how they are with it these days. Uh, Chester on the tail again, a new livery Alaska. Um, nobody thought that they'd be seeing an Alaska Airbus aircraft up until uh, Virgin America completed the merger and these started to get unveiled. I remember watching a video of it um, for the first time and this I found it really strange, but I've since grown accustomed to it. I have seen a few of these IRL and they look okay, um, but I think it'll be much better when Alaska returns to an all Boeing fleet pretty soon. So next aircraft. Another wonderful Alaska aircraft that I would recommend having is this, honoring those who serve special livery. This is on a 738 registration, November 570 Alpha Sierra. Uh, this is a NG model release, and I got it this past Christmas. Another really nice addition. I'm, I was kind of happy when they released it because I kind of wanted an Alaska special livery. Um, I actually ended up getting two when you do count that Horizon Air 
um, aircraft. So most of you probably have seen Mass Unboxing 6, but if you haven't yet, go check it out. Quite long though, I'd recommend watching it in parts, but I'll just kind of do a basic overview of the aircraft. So at the front we have the cockpit windows, a little bit of a decal underneath, which I don't know if the camera will want to focus on it. It's been having, it's been problematic with me today, so I don't know what its deal is. Must be having a bad day. Um, but there's a neat little decal underneath with five stars in it. Um, got some stuff right next to the L1 boarding door, honoring those who serve titles, and then we have an Alaska title that kind of blends in with the fuselage. And then we have the blue that starts to come into the picture, and then we have Chester on the tail, which I believe he is slightly modified on this aircraft. And when you do put it next to a standard liveried, yep, and you can kind of see the green color is removed and it's replaced with a more of a lighter blue. Still kind of looks like the regular Chester, just with a minor color change. Got some red stripes, stripes up at the front of the engines, or actually no, I think those are more gold colored. And then all blue engines. And then on the scimitars, you do have the American flag. I'll probably, I'll probably have much better luck trying to get this camera to focus on the back pair of scimitars. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. Looks pretty nice. I like the idea that they did. Um, I think some other aircraft do have it, like a 739, I believe, and an Embraer 175. Um, I know Gemini Jets today released that, so if I do want an Alaska 175, I'd probably have to go for that, but I would prefer a normal livery before I get any sort of special liveries. It's going to be kind of like my thing from now on. If I'm going to get a aircraft that I really need, um, I kind of want it in a, in a normal livery first, like an American 730-7800, although I have pretty much every special livery and then some of that aircraft type. Um, I would prefer a normal livery first before a special livery. So, next aircraft. And here is that normal livery I was talking about. This is another NG Models release from May of 2020. Is this 738. Wonderful aircraft. I'd recommend getting it. Gemini Jets did it back when the new livery debuted, I believe. Um, but those are going for lots of money on eBay. And of course, I think this is as well. But I have not seen any listings, so kind of rare. So the front we have the cockpit windows, the proudly all Boeing titles, because they keep them on all Boeing aircraft for whatever reason. The Alaska billboard titles on the engines. Um, pretty much your standard Alaska livery. The registration is 565. I believe Gemini did 563. And it also does have the improved landing gear, the nose landing gear, which some people have um, pointed out to NG that it was a bit too high on some of their older releases. And thankfully they did improve on that by making it shorter with each passing release, which looks really nice. Um, the rest of the mold looks really great. Uh, scimitars are pretty much the same thing as you see there near the back of the aircraft towards the tail. Um, that's all I have for this aircraft. Again, I would recommend getting this if you can find one. Um, if you do, you're probably going to be paying a lot of money for it, but at this point, um, you just may have to deal with it. So. Now that's kind of why you pre-order models if you can. One of my most recent Alaska additions to the fleet is this 737-900, a non-ER variant without winglets. Um, so it is on an old cradle mold. I did show this in Massive Unboxing 7. Most of you already seen it, um, but for those that haven't or did not get to that part of the video, I'll kind of show you the rounds of this aircraft. So we have the cockpit windows. Uh, once again, proudly all Boeing titles. Got the nose landing gear, which looks uh, a little iffy, but again, I think it's a mold that they rarely ever use, so there's really no point in updating it. The Alaska titles, and then we have the engines, which I believe are about the same size. Ooh, there's a little bit of wing flex, I think. Now, I know some models are prone to zinc rot. I just don't think this is. I think it takes a while for that to set in, but I think they did sort that issue out, because that happened like years and years ago. So whatever factory they were, using to make their models. I think they have since moved out of it, so I believe this should not have any zinc rot, zinc rot issues down the road. Registration is November 303 Alpha Sierra, and then we got Chester on the tail. So some of these Dash 900s, uh, the non-ER variants, they have gotten the new livery, so I believe those these will be sticking around. Um, and some have also gotten the split scimitar treatment as well, which is kind of nice. So. And the last one for this video is this 737-900ER variant in the old livery. So this is actually my first Alaska model that I got way back in, I think, 2015-ish. Um, I did get this way back then because, well, I kind of wanted an Alaska aircraft. So pretty happy to get this. Uh, damage that it does have, it is missing one of the nose wheels, so it looks a little off, but... Uh, nevertheless, it is nice to have, and also nice to have that 900 non-ER, so that way it doesn't really 
ruin this model. So cockpit windows, got probably all Boeing titles. So this is the old livery before the whole Virgin America merger. I got the old Alaska titles, more rugged and more, just kind of more mountain, mountain-ish, um, or whatever you want to call it. Um, green and black accents, I think a slightly modified livery, uh, made the Alaska font look a little more modern, and I think they did change the green line to a more lighter greenish. Um, the winglets also do have that same treatment. And then our good old friend Chester on the tail, an older version of Chester. Uh, looks really nice. I would definitely recommend this as well. If you're looking for an older livery in Alaska 737, I'd recommend this as well. Um, I think maybe, I think Gemini Jets did an 800 in this livery way back when, um, as part of a two pack back when they did that. Wish they would bring that back, because that was kind of a neat idea back in the day, but who knows, they just kind of like their singular pack models, so that way it maximizes profit for them, because that's all they care about these days is the money, um, not really much of the quality to the models, because they've become such a big brand at this point that having issues isn't gonna really affect them. And that's about it. Really hoping to build up on the Alaska fleet. Um, pretty much the only thing I'm missing is a 700 and then the aforementioned Embraer 175 and then an A321neo, but I don't think I'm gonna get that. I just wanna see if Alaska is going to retire those or get rid of those and then just have somebody else take over with operations of it. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.